when I was a kid, I was a terrible speller. And then somehow I became a writer and now a YouTuber. I do two of these videos every week and they take a lot of research, a lot of writing. For all of you kids out there in school, this is kind of like doing two research papers every single week. That's my life. I chose this. But along the way, I actually got pretty good at grammar and spelling. That's just something that happens when you do it a lot. And yet every once in a while, I'll write out a word, just a very common word. I've used it a million times and I'll look at it and just be like, is that right? It just looks foreign and weird and just makes no sense all of a sudden. Show shy. It's like out of nowhere, my brain just doesn't want to recognize it. You know, same thing when I'm talking sometimes. I'm just talking and it's like the word I'm looking for, it just, it just falls completely out of my, um, this thing. It's there, I know it's there, I just can't recognize it. But imagine living with a visual version of that. Like, like you can see the robot here on the shelf behind me, right? You can see it, it's got arms, you can see the little fishbowl thing on the head, but you just have no idea what it is. This is an actual thing that some people live with. It's called visual agnosia, and it opens up a window to some of the weirdness of our brains. Visual agnosia is defined as an impairment in recognition of visually presented objects. Luckily, this is extremely rare. Not very many people around the world have it. I tried to find a number and couldn't even find a number. It's that rare. But it's caused usually, like most things in the brain, by some kind of brain damage. You know, we talked in previous videos, like the one on Phineas Gage, about how little happy accidents have shown us how the brain works by the way the accident and the brain damage affects the brain's function. And it happens in the same case here. Sometimes it's a stroke victim, sometimes it's somebody with dementia, it's sort of like another uh, symptom of dementia. And then there's some people that just have some kind of lesion that's developed in the brain. Some examples of people who have this include this musician who got a head injury and now can't read music or can't read anything for that matter. Or this stroke victim who in this video tries to brush his teeth. As you can see, he picks up the toothpaste and smears it on the faucet at first, not knowing where he's supposed to put it. And then he picks up the comb thinking it's a toothbrush. For people with this condition, it's really important that they declutter their homes and their surfaces because they kind of know what things are by where they are. Sort of in the same way a blind person has to keep everything in the same position throughout their house because that's how they know, you know what things are, is by their position in the house. And people with this often use other cues in the objects, like their color or their shape, to kind of remember what they are. And also, in the same way that blind people are, um, people with visual agnosia, they actually have to use other senses like touch or smell or, or sound to, to kind of make up and compensate for their lack of, of visual acuity. And this is all really weird, but perhaps an even weirder form of this is something called prosopagnosia, which is also called face blindness. And this is exactly what it sounds like. People with this condition don't have the ability to recognize faces. And this was played to a uh, somewhat comedic effect in the fourth season of Arrested Development where Lindsay Bluth was dating this guy who had face blindness and hilarity ensued. Sort of. That season was not great. But seriously, imagine what it would be like to have this condition, not recognizing your loved ones, not knowing who any celebrities are, and not knowing who the person in the mirror is. And studies show that they do actually see the faces, they just don't recognize them and associate that with a name. Like sometimes if the, if the face has a very distinct characteristic, like a strong chin, or if the hair is a certain way, they can kind of pick that apart. Which honestly makes me wonder if I've got a touch of this because I've always been really good with faces and terrible with names. Which means I spend a lot of time going, uh... And like people with regular visual agnosia, face blind people often use other sensory cues to tell people apart. Meaning they might not recognize you from sight, but they might know you by your voice. And they also use cues like clothing and hair to tell people apart, which actually makes watching TV or movies really difficult because in every scene they might have different hair or different clothing on. One person with a condition said that watching a TV or a movie is basically impossible for her because every single time a person appears on screen in every single scene, it's like she's seeing that person for the first time. So at the end of the movie, she just kind of has no idea what just happened or what the relationships between the characters were. In office environments, people often kind of memorize where people sit, like what cubicle or what desk they sit in, and that way they can know who they're talking to when they go up and talk to that person. But to me, I think the biggest mind blow is the fact that they can't recognize even their own face. I mean, seriously, imagine looking into a mirror and not knowing who is looking back at you. 
One person said that she often gets uh, confused in restaurants because she'll be sitting there and she'll be wondering like, who is this lady that keeps staring at me over there? And then she'll realize that it's a mirror and she's looking at herself. That's, that's like nightmare fuel. This condition is usually caused by damage to the right temporal lobe, although weirdly it can also be genetic. This actually runs in families. Another person with this condition described uh, going to the airport to pick up her son who also has face blindness and they basically walked right past each other for like three hours not knowing who the other person was before they finally figured it out. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but that would make a very awkward family reunion. Perhaps most remarkable of all is that people with this condition lead fairly normal lives. The damage is limited to just the, the visual part of the brain. Their intelligence is unaffected. All the other senses are unaffected. And again, much like blind people, they can find ways to compensate through other sensory organs of the brain. Like take the musician from earlier. He can't read music anymore, but he is compensated and he's adapted. And now he plays by ear. Yeah, it really is a testament to the brain's ability to adapt and improvise to overcome challenges. And from now on, I'll have a great excuse whenever I can't remember somebody's name. Sure, it's a total lie, but hey, improvise. So yeah, I'll just put this out there. I'm curious, do any of you watching this video have this condition? Do you have any experience with it? Do you know anybody that has it? I would love to hear any, any stories or any background about it. This sounds like a fascinating condition and kind of terrible, but also just, just weird. T-shirts as always available in my store, theanswerswithjoe.com slash shirts, website, place, Nailed it. I decided to wear this one because it's not so like spacey and sciencey. It's more like introspective and philosophical because I have that side too. As I'm sure do you. All right, I'll leave you with that. Thanks a lot for watching you guys. Go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys, take care.